July produce update. So we're after the 4th of July, which means we're getting into the height of watermelon season. We get really excited about watermelon because we know they're great movers for food banks. So we wanna help you maximize all of the great local watermelon that we're getting in over the next couple of months. So one of the things to note with watermelons, while they are low ethylene producers, they are incredibly ethylene sensitive and a lot of people don't realize that. So it is best to keep these far away from your apples when they're in the coolers. Some common things that you're going to run into with our watermelons, you'll see some cosmetic blemishes from where the watermelon was laying in the field. Occasionally you're going to see just a little bit of sun scald, aka sunburn from these really high temperatures. We just start to see a little bit of, of um, cosmetic blemishes that are going to appear on the outside of the rind. But when you pick up the melon, as long as it's dry, feels a little heavier than it looks, sounds hollow when you knock on it, this is a really ripe, excellent watermelon that's ready for distribution. So let's go cut it open and take a look, talk a little bit more about what you should expect to see on the inside of your melons. So it's not uncommon that as we start getting into watermelon season, I'll start getting calls from folks saying, there's some weird stuff on the sides of my melons. It looks a little bit like adhesive. What is this? This is actually just a little bit of resin that's formed basically from the concentration of sugar inside the watermelons. A little bit of light cracking will happen and the melon will actually ooze out a little bit of sugar and form this nice sticky resin to essentially scab over and heal itself. Totally distributable, totally edible, but it's just something that we are more often see on these donated melons than what you would see in the grocery store. Also quite common to see in these watermelon loads is just a lot of size variability. Right, so from our, our monster size to our standard size watermelon, we see it just a little bit of it all in these donated melons. Totally normal for the season, and you can have actually some pretty significant size variability from bin to bin. Another common question that I get as we start handling more melons is, where do I store these? The ideal temp for watermelons for storage is in that 50 to 55 degree range, which for most food banks is a little bit warmer than the coolers, and a little bit cooler than the ambient temperature. Melons are certainly susceptible to chilling injury. High in water content, which means when that water starts to expand when it freezes, it's gonna break the cells on the inside and that's what leads to that mealy, mushy texture when you cut a melon open. But they can handle some, withstand some cooler temps for a short period of time. The big thing is that if you're gonna store these that, um, in a temperature range that's below ideal, you'll wanna move them within a week or two just to get that maximum shelf life on the melon. What we're looking for inside the melon is nice firm texture. You want to see that the cells are still intact. Again, it's just a nice firm, very crisp, very juicy. Oftentimes another question that we get is, well I thought these were seedless. How come there's those little white seeds on the inside? These are actually not seeds. They're underdeveloped and so they're still considered a seedless variety. When you open up a seeded variety, you're going to see the seeds are fully mature, developed. They would be able to germinate if you were to plant them in the ground. So this is considered a seeded variety. When you get the little white ones, still seedless.